Sophia here. Today is all about glass butterflies. These are my color choices, the color palette I'm going to be using. The customer said his wife's favorite color was orange, so I decided to do the main colors on the outside, the biggest piece is orange. And then I chose a neutral color, which is this kind of clear, striated type of white. And then we have a pretty purple, because orange and purple just look gorgeous together. Now this video is all about the cutting, the designing of the glass. There's no soldering in this video, so just a heads up if that's what you're looking for. What's cool about this is I got this tool, well actually my partner, it's my partner's tool that I steal, but here it is, it's got this awesome hammer at the end of it. It's very heavy, so it makes it very easy. Once it starts to fracture, you can really follow that fracture. You'll see me, it is a glass cutter, you'll see me use my glass cutter and then put it down and use his only for that hammer. I love it, I'll try to figure out what it is. He always gives me a hard time. I'm always stealing it and putting it places he can't find, but it's really, really cool. I'm going to have to order another one. Now, when I design this, usually I will take like a clear piece, put it right on top of my template, but I and draw out the pattern. I always make sure though, to just make sure that I draw on the outside of that line. That way, if I need to grind, I can. Obviously, if I start drawing on the inside of the line, it might be too late and I might have a huge gap there, so always make your piece a little bit bigger if you need to. Now, the point of this video is to show you about like your choice in glass. A lot of glass that you get will have these gorgeous, gorgeous stripes and like swirls and flow and you want to utilize that. I mean, that is actually the biggest part of the design. It's not just your template. It's the type of glass you use can show movement. Um, it can show a lot of beautiful things. It can just give the piece a lot of beautiful attributes. So this is me trying to use the glass in a way that really complements my pattern. It's a butterfly, I wanna make it look like it's in motion without it being in motion. So I wanna make sure my glass, the stripes in my glass aren't just vertical or up and down, which you see here, they're the wrong way. I want, so I actually end up cutting this a few times. And the one thing that is true about when you do this, when you do match up patterns to the type of glass you're using, doing it this way is you might only be able to use certain parts of that glass. And um, cause it's going the direction you want or it has a specific spot on it. So you end up cutting into your, your glass panels a little more, but it's totally worth it because it does make the piece. So I do end up recutting this out and that's because it was going a little bit too horizontal. I wanted it to the striations to go in a diagonal way. Actually, my partner ended up coming in to show me how smooth he is with his glass cutter. Um, and, you know, he is really good at it, but not this part is not the part I'm talking about, but he will use those pliers in like the craziest ways and on things that have curves and all these angles, and he just puts like the slightest amount of pressure on them and seems to like get a solid cut, which is really cool. I'm a little too impatient for that and I'll just cut away as I go. So usually when I'm doing like a solid pattern, I will, especially with the butterfly, I only will cut out something that's symmetrical. I will only cut out half of the pattern as you see. And I will use that same template piece on the other side 
That way, one, it's a lot easier, you don't lose your pieces, and two, if you cut the other side, you know, you might cut the other patterns on the, on the left wing a little bit bigger, it can get a little wonky that way. So I always stick to one side and that will guarantee that symmetry for me. When I do do a solid piece like this, like something that's a butterfly, a dragonfly, anything that's like a known, well really any type of pattern, I try not to just use opaque glass or all clear glass. I want to, the glass you use really brings it to life. If you use all just straight opaque glass, it's still gonna look gorgeous. But if you have some elements that are kind of transparent, it's really cool, it gives it way more detail, it gives it a whole new thing to look at. Um, it brings the light in beautifully. I always suggest mixing that type of glass. So I always try to have a see-through type of glass and an opaque glass. And this white glass was really cool because it had like striations through it, which is really fluid throughout the whole piece. But look, as you can see, the lines in those orange wings, they flow outwards. So it really does give it like a beautiful movement to it. I did the same thing when I put my pattern on my purple pieces. I tried to do that exact same thing to make the purple flow in different directions to show the movement. Unfortunately, I did not have my white paint pen, which I usually use on all my dark colors. And I have this really thick, thick black textured glass that I wanted to use for this little beauty's body and it was just such a pain to cut through I can't even tell you it's just it's it was pretty crazy I'm sure you can see the struggle in me and I did not have my white paint pen so I could barely barely see the lines so what I ended up doing is cutting most of it like that I could see and I just put my paper template right on it and I brought it to the grinder and I grinded it down so don't get all bummed out if you can't see your line and you're using a dark piece of glass because you can just simply cut it a little bigger and grind it down to where you want. When using your glass grinder, they usually say to keep it flat on the table of the grinder. Now, I always pick it up. I always find more control that does leave more room, you know, it being uneven on one side, it being at like an angle. But I love to kind of pick it up and feel the glass. I don't like to just push it against the bottom of my grinding bit, but you know, just feel it out what you want. You're gonna wanna make sure your sponge is nice and wet. I always pour water on top of my sponge. And then you'll see me like I occasionally will squeeze my sponge if I feel like my bit is getting a little dry. Because it will just heat up your glass and crack it. Though I've never had that happen using my glass grinders. It would always happen when I was using like my regular grinder that I use for metal. <laughs> so that is a cool thing that hardly ever happens. And then you are going to wash all your pieces, get all that oil off, and I will usually clean it with some rubbing alcohol as well after I've washed it, just to make sure. And then you're gonna foil it. If you wanna see more like in-depth videos of the process, let me know. I can do like a breakdown, each step type of thing, all my favorite tools. I have a video out there that's very basic. It's just the DIY stained glass feathers that you can look at for, you know, kind of like the tools I use and the steps you go through. But it's always get your design, mark your glass, cut the glass out, grind it, clean it, foil it, then solder it, then patina it. So there's quite a few little steps, but once you get it down, it's very easy. Now I don't show the final part of me soldering, but what I do do with my butterflies is I get little copper tubing. It's very flexible. I just get it at Home Depot and I just cut a little piece, probably about an inch and a half, curl it, and there you see it, and I will solder that right to the piece. And that gives her her beautiful antennas. So here she is, she is gorgeous, she is magical. I, she's something out of a fairy tale. I love doing butterflies, I love doing dragonflies. Please like, comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook page and our Instagram page. Till next time.